So probably the hardest fucking part of Dungeons and Dragons is being the dungeon master. Uh, there's you have a whole fucking book dedicated to breaking down what you should and shouldn't be doing, and how to DM. But let's let's be completely honest. Has the DMG ever actually been of any real fucking help to anyone besides having having a couple of prestige classes in there? Sir, how about you? Have you have you ever used the DMG? Uh, nope. I never DM'd a game before, so I've just ran run under a lot of games and had a lot of shit DMs in my time. I could have sworn that you at least DM'd a little bit. I've practiced, but I haven't actually run anything major, so I wouldn't say that I've DM'd a whole lot. That said, uh, even if I tried, the DMG would not have been any help whatsoever. I can tell you that just by reading. Yeah, it's, I mean, if we look at the 3.5 one, really the only things of what, you know, I'm actually going to grab mine. I'm actually going to grab mine here real quick to illustrate the uselessness of this fucking book. I'm going to go just right down the fucking line on the table of contents because a lot of people, I know the first thing they do is they read the DMG. Oh, shit. These pages are a little on the stiff side. I just got a fucking new one. Split the old one in half. Uh, more because it was old as shit and it had been in so many backpacks and used so many times and you know left on so many fucking tables outside it was an old ass book it's split in half so i got a new one off ebay and the front cover is like really stiff so it keeps fucking <laughs> it keeps closing itself uh let's see uh movement rules nobody fucking cares movement in three dimensions i kind of cares do the stuff that i'm doing requires that no, no, it doesn't. Um, combat, line of sight. Line of sight. Did you hear that? Alberto Erez, did you hear that the quartering was booed off of EVS's live stream? What the fuck happened with that? F Alberto, fill me in uh, while we do this. Adventures, motivation, structure, site-based adventures, event-based adventures, the end. Encounters, treasure. Nobody uses the treasure chart. Nobody uses the treasure chart. Uh, people don't even really use the experience chart for that fucking matter. Traps. Tra okay, the trap section is pretty good. The trap section is useful. Dungeon ecology. The monster manual is going to do that better than the DMG. Uh, let's see here. Non-player characters. Eh, eh. Nobody uses the NPC classes. If you use the NPC classes, you're under. You're really underpowering uh, your monsters and your NPCs, so I never recommend using those. Uh, characters, blah, blah, blah. Prestige classes, again, only section here uh, that I think is actually worth it. Magical items. That's that's not a bad section, but most of the times I really recommend uh, dungeon masters create their own magical items and whatnot. Unless you're using things like, you know, uh, the Sword of Cost, the Eye and Hand of Vecna, uh, the Rod of the Archmage, things like that. I mean, there's really no reason to use standard block fucking um magical items but the problem becomes is you have to start learning the power economy behind these weapons and items uh second fleet actual says hey my dmg used to get tons of use lots of tables for things like making magic items and for things for making npcs the classes are good for large armies i would actually uh counter and say that if you're using large armies you should be using the um what book was it in? There's an actual rule system for army combat in, I think it was, oh, what the fuck was the name of that book? What the fuck was the name of that book? Sword and Stone, I think was the name of the book, Sword and Stone. It was a 3.0 book. And it had rules for how to have one army fight another army. And you basically treated the entire army as um, one monster, one singular uh, monster. And God, I, I know the name of this book. I know the name of this book. I have a PDF of it somewhere. Pathfinder uses a very similar system, by the way. Do they? Do they? I, I, never, I, I was never really a big fan of Pathfinder. Heresy, I know. Sword and Fist. Sword and Fist was the name of the book I was thinking of. I think that's where that was. I'm not sure. Um, what is this? Oh, okay, that's what that is. Um, 
is this it? So, but anyway, uh, Mari here was trying. Oh, Alberto mentioned uh, quartering super chat EVS, telling him to end his live stream so he could go live. Maybe it's a joke or something. I don't know. Yeah, it seems unnecessary. There's no reason to boo anybody off of that. Uh, anyway, um, but yeah, so Mari was trying to go ahead and you, you were, this was your first time DMing, right? Yeah. <clears throat> How did it go? Uh, not so good. Bud can tell you. Oh, it was, oh. it was, it was a freaking. it was something that happened. Well, here's the thing. There were like thing. five different situations in which I realized that this might have been a mistake at first and that I probably need to iron out a few issues with the server itself before I actually begin to do anything at all. Well, I mean, I think it was also partially due to the fact that there was, like, no planning put into this beforehand. Well, 99% of D&D games have no real planning to Well, I mean, with. of course. I mean, even when with stuff I DM'd on my own, it usually was kind of off the cuff with a lot of things, but this was, like, absolutely nothing planned. Like, this was just, the the entire idea of what this was, it was just like, oh, um, we're gonna make a freaking Attack on Titan D&D thing or whatever, and we're gonna make it pretty much basically the same thing as the, as the show's story, and with actually not really many, any dev- if any, deviations from any plot points whatsoever. Oh, no, there will be. There will be. No, I know, but starting off, it hasn't been anything like that. And it's, it's like, um, you gotta... Even starting off, it's better to kind of just at least you set some things apart. Into to... it before you start murdering them secretly. Yeah, but still, there's also the p- part where people can get bored with stuff very easily if you do that. If Especially you're if you're basing role... it off an existing plot, because people already mm-hmm. know what the plot is. Yeah, you exactly. you never want to you never want to unless you're doing. There was a, a famous web comic back in the day about where somebody adapted the Lord of the Rings into a D&D session and uh, he thought his players would take it seriously. They did not take it seriously. And that ended up being one of the most amusing web comics uh, I have ever read. Um, act, uh, second fleet actual says that mass combat rules from sword and fist were crap. So it made our own rules. Yeah, I couldn't, I agree. They definitely did a lot of work, but that's the beauty of D and D you're supposed to be tweaking that shit. You're not supposed to be using the word, uh, the rules verbatim. Uh, mm-hmm. Delmer Putnam says that they use the CR chart in the DMG when they create monsters. And Crass Clowns remembers the fucking name of it, DM of the Rings. That's what it was, DM of the Rings. Um, so thank th- uh, thank you for that, Crass Clown. <coughs> it was a great fucking comic. And they used images from the movies, which made it all the more fucking hilarious. Um, because the, every character was exactly what you do not expect them to be like. But, I mean, I... Trilo, you know, uh, hit me. You know, give me your input on this. I mean, personally, I don't think that a a D and D game has to have tons of combat. I think a lot of times where it's most fun is when you're not smacking things, when you're actually having to get in character and yell at people and you know debate and actually try to convince people uh, to do what you want and try to find a resolution for a problem. What a, you know, you've you've played a shit ton just as much as I have. What do you typically think is more fun? Well, I think I personally tend to enjoy a mix of both combat and interaction. But really, when it comes down to that kind of thing, you have to know your group. Some groups are very smash happy. Other groups like the deep, dark intrigue and diplomacy kind of gameplay. I'm kind of in the middle. I I can take both of them in small doses. I tend more towards the intrigue side because that's just kind of what I like. But if I don't get to smash something eventually, I will get bored. I'm I'm, I'm trying to remember what. Which fucking character of yours was it that was in my Jack the Ripper campaign? That would have probably been uh, Ailey, the Elf Sorceress. I, I, I don't think it was Ailey. I know I know Ailey was involved in it at one point, but you asked uh, you you asked to take Ailey out because you had another character involved, and ultimately Ailey is um overpowered as fuck. Yeah, pretty much high level mage. Yeah, thirtieth level sorcerer. <sighs> Fuck that. Um, Have fun. Game balance, goodbye. Super beautiful noise. What is your opinion on Sargon of Akkad? I used to like him until he became a cringy Spurg. 
Uh, I haven't paid attention to Sargon of Akkad since he had that um, last encounter with Anita Sarkeesian, <laughs> where he just, where all he did was sat in the front row and just smirked the entire time, and she flipped her ever loving shit. Uh, that I think that was Sargon. Um, that was beautiful as fuck. But other than that, I honestly haven't been paying that much attention to Sargon. Um, there's a lot of people in this community to pay attention to, and it's hard to keep track uh of just this community enough as it is was that the hour of the knife campaign no this was something i made i had a uh, basically it was inspired by the jack the ripper murders and it, there was i mean you were in the entire thing uh serp or trilo whatever i'm just gonna call you trilo um do you i don't even think there was more than one in was there ever an instance where there was a fight in that campaign? Uh, yeah, you forget the uh, the whole boss fight that we had going on where we fought like six different. Well, guys. no, 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 no. I mean, I just Ballard. just the just the the Ripper part. Uh, the Ripper part, I don't actually know. I don't I think there was a I single. Remember it. Oh no, there was a single bit of combat. There was a single bit of combat, but I don't think you actually know about that. Um. So here, here's a great idea. Here's a, here's a great. I was, here's I was a, involved in the more hack and slash parts of that quest, I think. Yeah, because of the stuff that came afterwards. But so here's here's a, something to think about, Mari. Is it was a detective type game, okay? And there was not a single bit of combat the entire time. There was actually, I think, there was only one instance of actual combat. And what happened uh, was generally this campaign was. Okay, it introduced as somebody came running out of the tavern, screaming bloody murder, and freaking the shit out. The party ran in, and saw, tried to find out what was going on, and there was this hooker who was murdered and, like, fucking mutilated inside a room. And, like, you know, the door, you know, they, there was no way that the guy could have gotten out besides the door. Nobody had any idea what the hell happened. They had to go in and do their investigator work, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, you know, everybody just was like, okay, well, let's report it to the guards. That's it. Well, then comes the second fucking murder. And, you know, they have to go and do their whole thing. And this one was like another prostitute was nailed to a fucking wall, uh, you know, in like the alleyways just south of, you know, the place where everybody hung out. And they went and they had I to do all their Jack investigation. The huh? Was it like Jack the Ripper themed or something? Because that's what it's reminding me of. Yeah, like all the people who were killed, like they had their, it was like a mix mash of the different names of the Jack the Ripper victims. And so it, I thought it was kind of fun. Um, but either way, <clears throat> you know, it, it wasn't until really like the third victim came in where they started getting teased. And I remember Trilo's character here ended up getting like uh, the nose of one of the victims sent to them in the mail. It was like an unsuspecting eight-year-old boy just comes up with a package. He's delivering the package. Here you go, ma'am, and gives him the package. And then all of a sudden they open it up and there's this severed fucking nose in the box. <laughs> and um, and then, you know, the fourth murder happened and everybody's trying to figure it out and blah, 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 blah. And everybody's thinking like, okay, where's where's like all this? Let's let's keep looking like it for like it's fucking magic. Let's rule out vampire. Let's rule out race. Let's rule out you know all of these big magical creatures. And it's like, no, it's not that. No, it's not that. No, it's not that. No, it's not magic. No, it's not magic. No, it's not magic. And they're all like, but what the fuck is it? What the fuck is going on? What you know? What? How is this fucking possible? And th that's where the beautiful twist comes in. Is they have no idea how this guy is doing everything. And um. <laughs> super beautiful noises apparently having problems with their weed apparently they got some bum ass shit uh try pills pills are better don't follow my fucking advice ever but <laughs> there was uh but then they ended up getting to like the fourth victim and they realize okay this is you know we know who the next two victims are okay and so they take the next two victims the next two prostitutes and they hide them all uh and i can't remember who, who do you remember whose idea it was Trilo to to take him to the Purple Dragon Knight Fortress. I can't even remember which character I was on. I don't remember who's. You were on Mari. You were on uh, Maria. Maria. You were on Mar You were on her and Ailey. 
I don't remember Maria being involved in this one. If I if I had access to all my notes, I would look it up. But I'm pretty sure it was one of your stab happy characters. Um, but either way, somebody had the fucking idea to go ahead and take two prostitutes to an army base and have the army watch after them because one of the people in the army owed one of the uh, player characters a favor. And well, they didn't die. And, you know, within a week when the guy said, I'm going to kill him by this certain time. And so they were like, okay, fine, fuck it. Just let him free. And as they are let, you know, leading these women out, they're just like, why are they carrying giant bags full of money? No reason. No reason whatsoever. They, like, I don't know why they thought taking two prostitutes to an army base was going to go over very well. But either way, that was their fucking idea. Okay. <laughs> Tim Cook says, been gaming for 18 years now, and that's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it wasn't I, mine. I'm pretty sure it was fucking yours. It might have been. It might have been um, Elf's idea. Rebel. That sounds like something that Elf would do. Yeah, that, 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 that does something like something Rebel would do. But yeah. Either way, um, again, keep in mind there's not a single drop of combat by the time this happens. All it is is skill checks, skill checks, skill checks, <laughs> walking around, interviewing people, trying to figure this whole thing out, and everybody is like fucking freaking the shit out about this story. I mean, the entire, you know, yeah, server. And, that, and that's the thing. I would have no problem with, like, a Call of Duty <sighs> one. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, but, like, here's the thing. It all just ends abruptly. The murders stop. There's no more killings. And everybody's wondering, what the fuck happened? Well, it turns out that some chick completely unbeknownst to the party, this other player was fucking investigating all of this and they ended up meeting the killer because the killer was like, okay, you're becoming a pain in my ass. You need to fucking die. And he tied her up and knocked her out. Well, she came to, he was getting ready to kill her. She rolled her escape artist check. Perfectly fine. Uh, ended up, you know, getting out of the ropes the guy comes over thinking she's restrained, so he's flat-footed. He's, like, completely open to get hit, okay? And she's thinking, oh, he's a vampire. Oh, he's, you know, some kind of fucking demon. He's a fucking wizard or something. And, you know, he reaches over, and she just takes the knife from out of her back from the slight hands, okay? And because he's unsuspecting and everything, so his AC has gone all to shit, she just stabs him in the fucking throat. Oh, jeez. She just stabs him in the fucking throat, and he falls over and fucking dies. Okay, that's it. She just fucking leaves him there in the fucking sewers, and it turns it, it turns out that everybody's like, so how, you know, one person ends up figuring out what the hell this guy was, and all it was was somebody who had the same capabilities as a player character, but was very creative. They were basically just Batman. Okay, it was just a normal fucking dude, and um. That ended up like annoying the hell out of some people because like, oh my god, it's so obvious. Why didn't we see it? I'm like, yeah, all he did was pick lock, you know, pick the fucking lock. All he did was go out the fucking window and had some fucking rope. Like every time he did something that they thought was supernatural or whatever, because they're so conditioned because the players, because this was Forgotten Realms, the players were so conditioned to thinking it's gonna be some big demon, it's gonna be some big, you know fucking undead lich it's going to be blah 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 the the last thing they suspected was just a dude who had a particular set of skills that he acquired over a very long career that made people's lives very difficult for them and that he would find them and he would kill them that's all it was so i mean it's because you were like you were doing an adaptation of D D with attack on titan right mari um, well, most, I, <sighs> most of it would be combat based, obviously, but, um, for those who have actually, A, either read the manga or B, watched the show, you will know that there are small mystery aspects that you don't really get until way later on. Or if you go back, you go and read things all over again, and then you'll realize that, hey, yeah, these sorts of pieces stick together. It's like putting together a puzzle. So you do have some greater overarching story. It's not just Attack on Titan. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. Uh, Domera, Domera Com blog asks, so you just had the resolution happen away from the party. Um, not really, because that was act one out of a three-act plot. 
As a player, uh, I will say the resolution, the resolution to Act One happening away from the party really did irritate a lot of people. Yeah, until they realized that there was an Act Two. But that's the problem when you're DMing well, in you Neverwinter it. Nights. One and Act Two. Yeah, that's the problem with Neverwinter Nights. Is some and this is something that is a problem with DMing as a whole. Is sometimes your plan doesn't survive contact with the players. And you can get thrown for a world like that where, okay, this person who was investigating everything on their own just did like nat, like it was, I think it was like literally three nat 20s in a fucking row. And they ended up killing the guy. But then he ends up coming back. And, you know, then I, and then, um, everybody who was involved in the first part ended up being, uh, front and center for, uh, the second act of the game and a couple of them got into the third act and there were a lot of other plot lines and everything. But then the, the bit of the problem was, is a lot of the people ended up leaving the server and some of them got banned or were basically told, yeah, you're one strike away from getting a ban. So bit of a pain in the ass with all that shit. Um, but, but you know, there was resolution definitely reached for some people. And as I said, it was <coughs> act one of act three. And no, I'm going to be pretty lax with that. I mean, we had a few goofs earlier today. I logged them all in a little section, a little funny moments highlight section. I'm just going to keep it as that. Every time there's a goof, I'm just going to ask people to erase it, and then we'll log it in the actual. Come again? You you were basically nothing but static there. At the moment, anyways. Now I can hear you, yeah. Are you there? Oh. Yeah. Sorry about that. There must be something wrong with my microphone. I apologize. Yeah, can you hear now? Sorry, I didn't want to burp into the microphone. Um, what I was trying to say is that um, we did have a few mess-ups, but I didn't ban anyone over it. Uh, instead, I just decided to log them in a little funny moments section. Well, what do you, when you say mess-ups, what do you mean? Um, like horrendous fuck ups, people being cringy as all hell, and I just had to get rid of it. Uh, I mean, like, uh, I okay, so you like, was how many people were in this game? The ninth dimension. How many people were in this game? Um, I probably need to prune a few because there are a mm, there's 20. Your fingers I'm sorry, go. fucking what? Yeah, there's okay, 20 freaking players. In this How? stupid D and D campaign, uh, okay. like she, 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 she shilled this freaking thing out yeah, everywhere. Hey, one at a time. One at a time. One at a time. She shilled this game out to everyone we know, and she's got like six hundred followers. Ha at least half of which being really active. Okay. So um. we got like a billion people in that in that server. It's it's it's. I'm definitely gonna prune a few. Definitely. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Trilo, have you ever, even on Neverwinter Nights, have you ever seen a fucking event with that many people? I have, and it was terrible. Mm. I have only DM'd that many people twice, and every time I did, it almost broke the fucking server because there were that many people with just that many fucking spell effects on, and the server let. Remember the Wear Bear attack? Uh, there event. were only, I think, eight of us there when we broke that no, episode no. at that time. No, no, no. There were eight in one area after we told everybody to disperse. Because remember, everybody went to gate gate three. Because, okay, this is how it was set up. is There was the city of Arabelle and the city of Evening Star. These were the two cities that were going to be attacked. Oh, you're talking and about a Arabelle, Never mind. Yeah. Arabelle was going to be attacked about by... The three part attack. I was thinking of a different event. Yeah. I, don't, Arabelle... I guess you didn't run that one. Arabelle was going to be attacked by the south and west gate, south and east gates. So I had, I was on the west gate. There was another DM on the south gate, and then Evening Star, the other city, was going to be attacked. And we had another DM over there dropping monsters there. And immediately, every fucking idiot ran towards the same fucking gate. Okay, and so we had like thirty fuck people in one area, all buffed to the teeth, and they 
almost crashed the fucking server. So then we like had to manually go, okay, no, you players go here, you players go here. Just, <coughs> just fucking disperse. Okay, so it ended up being like 10 people in each area. And it still ended up being a bit much, but we had three DMs running this entire thing. So it was workable, but god damn, 20 people mm. that you need to you need to curve 75% of those fuckers out of the game. Mm. From a player perspective, though, when you're running an event that has that many people and is attracting that kind of attention, it is the onus is kind of on the DMs to make sure everyone goes where they're supposed to go. Because mm. otherwise, people are going to tend to just blob together and all want to do the same thing because they don't want to miss the action. And the easiest way to do that is to all be in the same spot. Yeah. I mean, and it, the thing is, is we made it very clear. This is getting attacked. This is getting attacked. This is getting attacked. If your level range is this, you go here. If your level range is that, you go here. And I remember we were like that. the level range thing was actually not clear at all. I mean, nobody knew that the big attack was off to the east. That was on and the uh, forum, really which was my fault. Only two people went there. Yeah, that was my fault because I initially believed, hey, people will read. <laughs> like you know, people who read. Well, when you're spamming, when you're spamming the chat for. like six blocks of text in, in a couple seconds, I mean. We tend to just skim over it. Well, no, it was on the forums. That's the thing. It, is I'm like I figured because it was a sign up based thing, and there was it was supposed to be like 20 people, and then boom, here comes 30. But you know, fucking. By the way, that was like two years ago. So fuck it. Uh, well, not even that was like three years ago. Now that I think about it. But either way, probably more than that. The cries reason is right. Yeah, read. Surely you just yeah. People can't fucking read. Um. <laughs> I've had people who are level eight show up for events that are clearly defined for level twenties, and then they get pissed off when they die in like three hits, which was pretty fucked up. Three, um, That's pretty generous for level eight. Mm. Well, they were also heal kit spamming. Even so, I mean, I imagine they just go splat in one hit. Yeah. Well, you know, the buffs were fairly easy to fucking come by on that. Originally, I was going to have a few people go splat before Bug woke up, but I decided to rescind that, and we'll probably be doing that either tomorrow or the day after, after I iron out all the bugs in the server. What? So what is your, your setup here? I mean, you're just using a Google Plus thing? She's using a oh, Discord. No, 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 no. So we always use for our... Uh, was it or D and D campaign stuff? Just because that it's easy just to get a bot in there, just to do dice rolls or whatever. It's easier than expecting people to do it on pen and paper. Honestly, has anyone made a Goblin Slayer overly specialized autistic character to derail <laughs> their GM's campaigns? Basically, every campaign that my wizard or Ailey sorcerer were in. Yes, I've also done that to a Dark Heresy campaign before. Oof. Wait, 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 wait. You didn't die in a Dark Heresy game? Yes, I managed to go through an entire Dark Heresy game that lasted three years without dying. My character was a ranged combat. Gone. I don't believe you. That's not possible. I don't believe you. You're lying. I ended up with a uh, long laser that could one-shot a Chaos Space Marine. You're lying. You died. <laughs> you died many, many times. Like, seriously, Dark Heresy is dying the video game. Sorry, the role-playing game. And then Rogue Trader is just actually kind of balanced, kind of. And then Death Watch is never dying the tabletop Wait, role so do I make this unbalanced, or do I just make it like Dark Heresy style where everyone fucking dies immediately? Well, you're playing Attack on Titan, so everybody needs to fucking well, die. This was mm -hmm. Dark Heresy 2.0, which is a little bit less lethal than 1.0. Uh, yeah, I only ever played the first. Can someone uh, slide version. me the rules for that, please? For what? Dark Heresy 2.0? Yes, you, please. You don't. You don't want that. It's really not that good of a system. It's like easy to learn. Though. I'd like to take a cursory glance, anyways. It's yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll find a copy that you can go ahead and buy, not pirate. <laughs> uh, but it's autism. The role, the the tabletop game. It is not an easy system to go ahead and you know DM shit tons of people on. Mm. Mm. I'd like to like. I would like to take a look, anyways. Just you know. Oh, we'll we'll find it for you. It's not hard to find, but buy it. Don't fucking pirate it. 
Oh, man. Uh, Tim Cook says that they played a Space Marine in a Rogue Trader game. Good times. You overpowered piece of shit. I saw some... Um, so, Delmer Putner, what's your opinion on the importance of world building uh, in a campaign of D&D? You need to build up the areas that you are around because you can never... Ex I mean, the, the Dungeon Master is going to go ahead and... Uh, you know, they're obviously, they're going to have to read some novels. They're going to have to read the entries and like the uh, campaign setting guides. They're going to have to go ahead and you know, maybe pick up a couple of YouTube videos to see what's going on, or maybe a computer game or two. But your players are always going to be the ones who are going to kind of be the odd person out. So if you're running a campaign in, you know, Chult, for example, okay? Oh, that, was, that was weird. What was weird? Oh, I just crashed out of the call. That's what uh, happened there. The share play for Kingdom Hearts stopped, too. Yeah, I know. I know. You can worry about that later, though. So, like, if you're running a game in, not even Schultz, Schultz would be a bad example. Okay, so Barovia, a bit of an esoteric setting, uh, Ravenloft. You, as the DM, need to know what the mists are doing. You, as the DM, need to know where the werewolves are going to come from. You, you know, where's the biggest population of them? You need to know that if you walk up to Strahd's castle, you generally fucking die. You need to know that if you harm a Vistani, you're generally going to fucking die. You need to know that if you piss off a guard and you're an outlander, you're going to fucking die. You need to know that if you are low level or even a moderate low, uh, you know, level and you're outside at night, you're going to fucking die. You need to know that if you walk through the mist, you're go probably going to fucking die. Uh, you know, it, it helps to create and I hate this word. It helps with the player's immersion if you know all these intricacies. If you can put on a Barovian accent. If you can, you know, describe like you you walk into, you know, Valaki, for example, or fucking um, Barovia Village, and you know you can describe how. You know, Barovia Village is kind of built up. It's kind of, you know, like a, a richer district. Uh, or you walk into Valaki, you're like, yeah, there's people throwing their chamber pots out in the streets. There's people selling rats, like, for food. Uh, you know, the temple district is the only thing that looks nice. Everything else has been patched the fuck together with, you know, <clears throat> whatever wood planks they can manage to fucking find. I mean, you have to world build. You have to be able to paint the picture of what the setting is like. You, Because otherwise, the only point of interest is going to go ahead and be your plot. And sometimes your plot is going to have low points. But if you – not to mention also, if you inevitably have those downtime periods in your, um, you know, your game, okay – where you know the party goes back to town after a dungeon and they need to start buying gear and everything like that you know you kind of want them to know okay well, we're going to want to go to the richer part of town we're not going to want to go to the place where everybody's eating rats and dead dogs because they're broke as shit poor to go get their weapons and things you know to help them navigate the place uh, but you can you know get around it if you really want to by just saying i go to the richest part of town and the best blacksmith possible but you know, even then, you kind of get into these interesting parts where if you've got a more intrigue, uh, important game, like you remember that scene in um, Bug, Inglorious Bastards. Mule style, though. Huh? Oh, sorry, I was talking to Bug. What about? It? That's more Camille style, like the um, the um. I want to copy his style in that respect. But at the same time, I don't want to drag it out forever because I tend to drag things on a little bit too long. Okay, well, let's 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 do this. Let's get an example. I asked you to ha have your uh, scripts and your notes around. So, like, yeah, hold on. Just let me drop that in there really quick. Give me a moment. Here, here we go. Jim Jam says, I hate the group I'm with right now, but I love the story. The DM made a really cool and the DM made a really cool game world. So, I mean, even if there's other shit that kind of sucks, boom. Uh, while I'm looking for this, uh, Bug, would you mind taking over and explaining what was going on for a minute for me? Uh, can we get a little bit of specifics here with that? Because you're, you're being um, a little bit uncertain. Descri describe one of their scenes. Okay. Um, wait, are we, talking about, are we talking about one of Camille's things? No, right? no, no. Mari's. Oh, Mari. Well... Okay, um, hold on. Because, like, I, 
honestly, a lot of a lot of what happened earlier was a freaking blur with her. I uh, I ended up staying up like super ridiculously late, and I am just I, I it is it is hard to really. So let me ask this then: uh, Were would you say that the descriptions and such and the scenes were very drawn out, very long? I mean, it's, that's that's a that's a tough thing to kind of. Eventually, someone will say something. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, everything was a blur. That's what she said. Says cries risen. Um, <laughs> I mean, here's okay. It's great if the DM can sit there and go on and on and on about you know the shit huts and the turnip farmers and you know, Oh, the wall is so great. The wall keeps out the wear rats. Don't go out at night because blah, 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 blah. Okay. Like it's great. If you can write like Tolkien and describe the door of Moria for four fucking pages, but here's yeah. the thing that was the, f except for the council of Elrond, that whole chapter, those were the four most boring pages in the Fellowship of the Ring, okay? Nobody fucking cared about the fucking door because that there was a fucking picture of the door, okay? Nobody fucking cares about the fucking door. So if you're a DM, never have a scene where you're the only one talking lasting for more than a minute and a half because mm. your players are going to get fucking bored and they are going to fuck off. It's just the way it's going to be. Yeah. So There's you a difference want, between a description and an exposition dump. Yeah, big difference between a description and exposition dump. And yeah. Council of Elrond is a great example of an exposition dump. It was pretty fuck boring because an exposition dump should be the length of a monologue, okay, or uh, you know an exchange between two characters. It shouldn't be. Elrond and Gandalf going for 30 fucking pages. But unfortunately, that's kind of what Tolkien gave us. Mm. Mm. <sighs> Crazy reason says, example of someone just banging on and on and on forever about a topic. There's the... Uh, completely insufferable section of Atlas Shrugged, I believe it is. No. The, the character talks for something like 56 consecutive pages. Oh, and that book one is... character having one dialogue. Funny thing. Okay, it's a funny thing. My friend actually bought a copy of Atlas Shrugged and intended to read it after he heard it was the basis for Bioshock. And it ended up becoming a doorstop. And then he get, he like regifted it to a friend, and that friend started using it as a doorstop. And then that friend gave it to another friend, and then they started using it as a doorstop. Uh, Atlas Shrugged is <laughs> only useful if it's making sure doors don't move. Uh, fuck that book. Fuck that book completely. Uh, there's much better ways to waste a month of your fucking time. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so is she just like gone completely? Uh, I don't think so. I think she's just, Oh, what's she doing? Oh no, she's getting, she's getting the, she's getting the shit for the thing. It doesn't help early because freaking, she deleted like all the shit. Once we, uh, once we were like, Oh, well we're going to, we're going to try to start over on this or whatever. She freaking, she deleted everything. You want me to describe like what happened? Okay, no, I I, I oh want a, a scene description. Give us a scene description. Oh yeah. wow. Um. <laughs> um. <coughs> Are you sure? It can't be that bad. It can't be that bad. <laughs> Come on, DM um, bitch. All right. Uh. Well, first of all, um, I had someone else be uh. Like a uh, drill sergeant temporarily. Uh, all the Om characters. Oh. Hang on a second. Om Lo, of course I remember you. You you were the one who was like, "Is my comment too long?" And I'm like, "No, give me a fucking novel, bitch." And you gave me a fucking novel in the comments section, just like I told you to, like a good boy. <laughs> anyway, continue. 
Okay, and um, right in the middle of that, uh, in the general chat, I had said uh, that you that someone needed to shape up because uh, the fact that they weren't using asterisks to describe um, actions was annoying the shit out of me, and they needed to sort themselves out. Everybody's going to roleplay differently, and I can tell you that yeah, if you're on Neverwinter yeah. Nights, if you're on like something yeah. like Neverwinter Nights, brackets or asterisks work great, but when you're using something like Discord, a lot of people will shift towards traditional narrative style. Yeah, Frankly, that's whatever I do with uh, the cringe into a black hole. Whatever I do with my stuff is usually just I'll I'll tell everyone to uh to set it to like three different fonts of how you're doing things. So like okay, um, actions would be italics, uh, thoughts would be bold, and then just regular words would be fine. You don't have to freaking put uh, parentheses or any of that crap or, or uh, quotes or any anything because it's just too much work to ask for those types of things for people. They usually don't bother with a lot of that shit. It's just easy enough. Like it's just easier to ask them to just kind of make it easier to differentiate between what they're saying, what they're thinking, and what they're doing. Essentially, long story short, that character game ended themselves right out there in the field. Oh, oh yeah, he freaking committed suicide out of nowhere. Like out of nowhere, they I had a character do that once. I I actually have had a character commit suicide, but it wasn't because of that. It was um basically they realized, wait a minute. So if we die in this fucking little puzzle thing, we're just shunted to the fucking uh you know entrance and we're done. We get to go home, and the DM was just like, <laughs> yeah, you get to leave the game if your character dies, and my character is just like. Fucking sweet, and he fucking slit his own fucking throat right then and there, um, <laughs> because w none of us were enjoying this game. It was so terrible. It was like uh, it was like a puzzle maze, okay? Which I'm like, okay, this will be cool. And it was a puzzle fucking, maze. It's not fucking terrifying, or not terrifying. And, and the, but the problem is, is like they were all puzzles that we've all fucking seen before, and it's like. <laughs> Oh fuck! They didn't put a spin on them or anything. It's it's literally we all knew the answers. Mike, so my character is just like, who's a dumbass fucking orc with like fucking eight intelligence. I actually had to drop points in intelligence with this character. It's just like me no happy now because he's fucking stupid as shit. He wasn't gonna figure out these puzzles even if I knew the answer to them. So I'm just like, okay, my my character is completely useless. And he slits his own fucking throat and he goes home. <laughs> And then to add insult to injury, one of the other guys whose character died, uh, he's like, I'm DMing a game. Let's go Let's go into the next room if you guys want to play a game. And I just grab my character sheet. Let's fucking do this. So the original DM just felt like absolute shit uh, because they ran a garbage game for like two hours. And it was like preceded by four hours of waiting for the bitch to get their shit together. So like nobody had any give a damn about this game whatsoever. But either way, uh, so do you have a scene for us? Can we get a, a scene description? Um, uh, you know, like in every friggin' people would take a long time to get some stuff line up and introduce themselves. It was kind of like that, and then okay, they just so... ended themselves right there in the middle of the field. Okay. Oh yeah, but no, that was of... very to be specific. I mean... He specific. He, he he said uh, he didn't. He didn't do anything. He didn't say any actions or anything like that. It was just kills themselves, and then they fucking. Just Give them the scene, it. you know. There well, wasn't I, yeah. a tavern. Think that. So let's go with. Yeah, I was gonna say let's go with something a little bit more detailed here. Yeah, one at a time. One at a time. Were you trying to say Trey though? Oh, I was just I was just giving a basic scene description to indicate this is what a scene description is. Serpent, you're really quiet. Sorry, I was leaning away from my microphone. Yeah, so like, the, you know, what I mean is scene descriptions. Like, they walk into the crypt, okay? And they see the one torch off in the distance and the shadows that are all being cast by the fucking wave after wave of cobwebs. Uh, you know, the bone particles and the dust that's in the air is drying out their throat and clogging their nose. Yeah, they hear in the entire server. You you what? I might have boned myself or sold myself up the creek by having Camille purge the entire server. Oh yeah, that probably wasn't a great idea because now we don't have any freaking examples of what the hell our scenes were like. Okay, okay, so, we so we're, we're gonna throw on the spot shit. here. We're gonna throw we're gonna throw her on the spot here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
Mari, all right, so you have your party, all right, okay? They are walking into a haunted forest. Set the scene. Oh, no. <laughs> Set the scene. Improv. Come on. I'm fucking shit at this. Jesus Christ. You're D- this is what you need to be a D- as DM. Okay? You need to be able to do this shit on the fly. So she goes, this, is, this is why she constantly steals my jokes. Watch me see. So, well, hang on. What, what are you trying to say there, sir? I'm saying, uh, I'm no, saying no, this is uh, why she always... Yeah, we heard, we heard, we got, we heard you. Uh, we, okay, we, okay, go ahead. I was just saying, me grok, me like smash, me walk into forest. What me see? <laughs> what does what does he see? What does crazy orc see? Mari. <laughs> oh no! Ethereal's got the great idea. Then, then a green dragon pops out. <laughs> Can, can you do this? Come on. Ethereal, I can't even see the chat. Hold on, let me open it on my phone. No, no, he was just making it. Uh, out of here, boys. Just, just think of something. Anything. It could be absolutely anything. It could be the stupidest shit ever. Just think of something. Okay, okay, okay. You you want to be describing the density of the trees. You want to be I describing if there's any... For a minute if there's there. any yeah, you want to be saying if there's any paths that are carved out. You want to be, you know, if this is a really, you know, if there's giant spiders in the forest, you want to say, look, there's canopies of cobwebs connecting from tree to tree that blocks out the sun. You want to be, you know, if it's during the day, talk about little sh- uh, pillars of light that are breaking through the tree line. If it's at night, you want to be talking about how, you know, there's only one moonlit grove in the center and it's illuminating, you know, this, you know, whatever the hell you want in the middle of that forest. Uh, you want to be talking about how if, you know, at the corner of your eye, you see purple eyes blinking in and out of existence from the line of the trees. You want to be talking about how you don't hear the birds. You want to be talking about how there's no wind. All the trees are still until you take a step and then there's rustling all around you. And then you're standing still and there's nothing. And every step you hear something moving around you. And every time you turn your head to look at that blinking pair of eyes, you turn to your right, and then you see it out of the left. You turn to the left, you see it out of the right. You spin around completely, you see nothing. And then something happens. Like a shadow comes up from the ground, and it starts fucking eating your intestines. You know, That's what I'm saying. Set a scene here. What should somebody describe? Don't try to be flowery about it. Okay, just be real quick, straight, plain to the point. This is what you need as a DM. Okay, so I'm going to change up, change the whole thing for you, make it easier. Your your part, your party has gone through the haunted forest. They're moving along their way. They fought like a spider or two, and they found the cave that they need to be in to find the vampire that they've been hired to kill. So when they enter into this vampire lair cave. What do oh, they see? Oh, sure. That's easy peasy. That's baby shit. I need okay, to- what do they see then? What do they see? Put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> um, a vast cave full of fucking cats? Hold on. Hey, that's easy <laughs> shit. I could do that. Anybody could do that. <laughs> I fucking suck it. And you know, I'm just going to straight up admit that I fucking suck at this shit. You know, we're going to get practice. There is no person in the world whose first d- time DMing was any lies, lies. You need to no, speak no, to Neil. No. It's fucking lies and slander. No, no, Ed, yeah, have you really ever ridiculous. read Ed Greenwood's first D and D shit? It was fucking terrible. Have you ever read Ed Greenwood's first D and D book? It was not good. Mm. Okay, it was bad. There were many, many, many bad books that came before Elminster Makings of a Mage. Gary Gygax wrote so many pieces of shit before he came out with Greyhawk. Okay, Chris Avalon had how many failed fucking attempts before he came out with the beauty that was Planescape Torment? How many times did Akira Toriyama fuck up before he made Dragon Ball? I mean, come on, let's be honest. Toriyama's still fucking up. Like it's 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 a skill you have to refine like anything else. And the fir- the first thing to understand, okay, as a DM is you have you do have to have a solid grasp on the rules. Okay, that's that's number one. You can't not know the rules. And I'm guessing you have a firm grasp on D and D five point 
yay, nay? For the most part, yes. There are okay. some things that I do need to brush up on just a little bit because we haven't played D and D all that often. When was okay. the last time we yeah. played Dodge? Uh, today, know, like a month or two ago. Well, I mean, it hasn't been that long since we played the 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 fantasy one that Camille was running. Hang on a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna prove a point here. Trilo. What's up? When was the last time you played actual pen and paper 3.5? Uh, hell if I know. I don't think I've ever played 3.5. Actually, I've played uh, a lot of Pathfinder tabletop. What's the flanking bonus? Uh, flanking bonus is when you are behind, when you and an ally are on opposite sides of an enemy, and you get a plus two attack bonus, I believe. And that's very how is it, how is is it very treated differently for that. rogues? Uh, rogues can sneak attacks when they're flanking. Yeah, that is useful stuff. That is very useful stuff. Holy. Okay, th th that's look. How long has it been since you played 3.5, dude? Trilo? Who, me? Yeah, you. Oh, How long okay. has it been since you played 3.5? Uh, does Neverwinter Nights count as 3.5? No. I have never played 3.5 then. My point. Okay, ask me a fucking mechanic. Give me, give me, a, give me a mechanic. Explain the grappling rules. Grappling. Uh, first, if you don't, you, there's a couple of different forms, actually. It's a modified form. But first, you know, you make your first check, and there's an attack of opportunity. You roll your grappling check. Then you, they get their opposed grappling check. And if you succeed, you do unarmed strike damage. Mm. Next round starts again, opposing grapple checks. They succeed. They are out. Some people will modify this by saying that uh, if there, you can make an escape artist check to get out of a grapple, which is unfair in my opinion because skills can go infinitely higher than fucking attack bonuses. Uh, and unless you're really specializing with a grappler or you have a size bonus difference, which gives you that nice fucking plus four on grapples, uh, I mm -hmm. think the escape artist variant on that rule is kind of shit. There's another one, there's another variant that says the first step to the grapple system is uh, a touch attack, which, you know, I prefer, you know, a fucking goddamn attack roll, but, you know, that's just. That's just fucking me. I prefer a grapple check right out the fucking get go. But there's a couple of different variants that people will use. There were um, actually there was a slim, a skimmed down version that was presented on, I believe it was called Giants Playground, where it was just you start off, it's a grapple check, fucking dot, no attack of opportunity whatsoever, because the there's no point to have it. Giant in the playground. Thank you, thank you. So getting a grasp on the mechanics isn't hard. It's like a bicycle. You get on it, you start running. Now, now I, it could be a bitch and be like, what are the counter spell mechanics? <laughs> nobody remembers the counterspell mechanics. That's something you look up every fucking time because nobody does it. Mm -hmm. uh, the only time you do uh, counterspelling is on Neverwinter Nights. But even then, here, watch. Trilo, do you remember the, the, number, the number pad key path to initiate counterspell mode in NWN? Fuck no, I don't know any of the number pad key paths. I just right-click on things. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like three five eight was the the fucking uh, hockey path. It was three five and eight. Okay, uh, so but you remember how counterspelling kind of works? That if you're hasted and they're not hasted, they can't. You know how counterspelling yeah, works. Yeah, I've pretty good idea how counterspelling works and never. Yeah, right. even then. So you you need you'll to remember have check to identify the spell. Mm -hmm. And if you have the proper spell, it uses that same spell. If you don't, it uses the highest dispel or the lowest available dispel that is equal to the level of the spell or higher. Yeah, so if you've got, you know, uh, only Mordenkainen's disjunctions, like this asshole would fucking do, because you could st yep. you could stock, what, like 10 fucking Mordenkainen's disjunctions, you overpowered piece of shit? Um, uh, you know, 14 ninth level slots, you are a fucking douche. <laughs> uh, you know, and they're throwing Don't eighth level spells. Okay, it would use it would use that. But if they had greater dispelling, it would be using greater dispelling instead. If you had a fireball, it would be using like dispel magic. You know, that's the you know you don't have to be at that level, but you it helps to understand the basic foundations. Like, what is what are the different types of armor class? What are the different you know what what is the difference between flat footed and touch AC? How do you roll a range touch attack? How do grenade weapons work? How do, you know, those are the things you have to understand. So if a player comes at you with like some really weird fucking, um, you know, idea, like, so, cause sometimes players will want to do shit that there's no rules for. Okay. Like, um, uh, what's a good example of the player doing something the there's no rules for? Come again. Like me in quests all the time. 
yes, like every time you are given a fucking goddamn problem, you always want to do some crazy ass fucking shit. Okay, so like, here's an example. Actually, why don't you give us one? What, what was the last stupid ass fucking thing you did during an event that there was no rules for, Shrilo? Uh, I don't know what the last one was, but I know one of the most prominent was uh, when uh, we had to calculate what exactly would happen when you drop the mountain on somebody's head because yeah. they were behind a, a force field that was impenetrable by magic and by physical damage because they were trying to cast a ritual and they were defending themselves. But the field was cylindrical and extended up and down, but apparently had no ceiling or base on it. So I simply started disintegrating the roof of the mountain that we were standing in and dropped several hundred thousand tons of rock on them. And then I, as a DM, would go, okay, well, first off, that's too big for a reflex save. So unless somebody has a quickened teleport spell or a quickened dimension door, you're not getting the fuck away from that because you can only move. You're going to have generously six seconds to get out of the way of that thing. And so if you can get out of the way in you know as much time as you could move in six seconds, one round, which would typically be, you know, depending on your feet four times, you know, let's say, uh, you know, uh, your movement speed, let's be ge very generous here. You're not getting out of the way of that fucking mountain. So you're fucking dead. <laughs> All right, but if you had a wizard in the party who had a quickened teleport spell already, you would have no problem getting out of the way. The wizard just teleports everybody off because a quickened spell technically casts as a free action, so it counts but as one I second. Add, but I will add, this particular caster was behind what was essentially a cylindrical Autoluc Fazillion sphere, which limits the ability of him to interact with the outside world or of us to interact with him, which is precisely why I had to drop the mountain on him, which is in turn going to affect his ability to make a reflex save because he can't make one now because he has nowhere to move. Yeah, because and once that, spell, once that sphere fucking drops, he's dead. Unless he can keep that sphere up indefinitely, which is not going to happen. Well, like I said, it uh, it actually was not a sphere. It was like a cylinder, but it didn't have a enclosed top or bottom on it. It was like a modified Brazilian sphere. Oh, oh, I didn't so, hear that. I didn't hear that part. I, okay. Yeah. So when I dropped the mountain on him, it just came down through the open top and just smashed him against his own his own uh, force field. Okay. Yeah, I didn't hear that part about it being uh, it having it having no top. It was kind of a weird setup. Yeah. Yeah, that's a weird so thing. The on the was actually doing something that had no rules for it, and I responded by doing something else that had no rules for it. Yeah, or using, say, one of my favorites, uh, Mage Hand, to squeeze someone's esophagus like you're fucking Darth Vader. There's no rules for that, but you use the strength score of the hand, which I think is 13, and you just use a grapple check with that or some dms would say okay well in place of the you know grapple check for that use your intelligence score for the modifier for the grapple check so you have to as a dm you have to understand first and foremost that the rules can be thrown out the window but you have to understand the basic design philosophy behind the rules in order to understand how to break them it's kind of like they always tell you when you're doing art or film it's like you have to know the rules before you can break the rules so because otherwise you won't know how to really apply some of these things uh, that your players want to do. And you'll always get that one asshole who's playing a wizard <clears throat> like me <clears throat> who will be like, I'm going to cast this spell. And then inside that spell, I'm going to cast this spell. And then once those two spells have hit their duration, I'm going to cast this spell and chain all this shit together and do some weird ass fucking shit. Like I'm going to put him inside uh, an Otolux resilient sphere. And then I'm going to fill the thing with fucking, uh, acid fog, and then when it's done, I'm gonna hit him with a fireball and ignite all the fucking acid, and roast the fucker alive. You know, um, so so you get the point I'm getting at here. You have to know the rules to break the rules, and you have to not be afraid to pull off weird shit like that. Mm. And, you, and most importantly, you have to know when to re how to react when the players do it, but because you're, you're always going to have someone decapitated someone with a fireball. What? In you're, our, you're talking over. Uh, decapitated a bandit with a fireball. Yeah. What about it? I just thought that was funny, and I should bring that up. All right. Well, I would have used scorching ray. Yeah, I think that was actually the one that she used. And scorching. Scorching ray. But yeah, so you were you uh, you might uh, continue there, uh, Trilo. 
Oh, I was out of things to say. I was just going to say that uh, as a DM, you have to be ready for when your players do something really stupid or just when they throw you a massive curveball. Uh, I remember during the Pathfinder game, our DM had a very, very difficult decision to make because we were running an evil campaign and we were about level nine and the final boss of the act that we were in was a silver dragon. And unfortunately for him, in Pathfinder, Silver Dragons are vulnerable to fire. And I was playing an Ifrit Blood Sorcerer. Well, I was level oh. 9, yes. But I had a feat that boosted my caster level by 1. I had an item that boosted my caster level for evocations by 1. And I hit it with a Scorching Ray, beat its spell resistance, and critical hit on the same time. So... I pretty much blew off 90% of its health with one spell, which was also the first round, first action of combat. So all of a sudden, now the DM needs to think, okay, what can I possibly do to make this still an interesting boss when they almost just one-shot it? So uh, real quick, sorry guys, my chat uh, completely fucking froze up. I've got it back here now. Uh, thanks to Jin Jam for the super chat. He asks... Have you made your D and D monsters? Uh, I, if you mean like for my own campaigns, would I make my own monsters? Yeah. Um, standard mooks, I would just take out of the monster manual and tweak the stats to what I needed them to be. But like bosses and unique encounters, uh, I would always make my own monsters. I wouldn't go. Well, what's the closest equivalent in the monster manual? I liked. Because I was playing with people who all knew the monster manual by heart, knew the DMG by heart, knew the player's handbook by heart, knew the complete series by heart, you know, like complete warrior, complete arcane, complete scoundrel, uh, complete mage, complete arcana, things like that. So I would I would never, I would, where I could, I would always uh, make my own monsters. I wouldn't take things from the monster manual just because they would know how to fucking handle them. It's kind of like that one min-maxer character in The Gamers, if you guys are familiar with that series who is like, he's like, there's one part episode, part in the, uh, the movie they did where like he's pumping iron and he's like got somebody quizzing him about monster stats and everything. The, the, my friends were like that. So I never wanted to use something that they would know how to take down, but they were generally very good about my play. My character wouldn't know that trolls uh, can't regenerate damage dealt by fire or acid. So they wouldn't, you know, react like that unless their character ended up learning that or they rolled a uh, knowledge dungeoneering or knowledge monster or knowledge nature check. Uh, Delmer Putnam asks, on the topic of players doing weird shit, what's your opinion on where you draw the line on rule of cool? Uh, where, like, okay. If it is unrealistic by the setting standards, you can't do it. We had like this one dude who ended up getting hit. Uh, it's a great example. We had this one guy who got hit with the epic spell nailed to the sky in the final conclusion to the event. And he wanted to like roll a fucking tumble check while falling to do like an anime fucking landing. And I'm like, dude, you just got hit with a like 11th level spell. You're going to hit the ground and you're going to crumble and you're going to cry and you're going to take like 75% of your fucking health in damage. I don't give a fuck if you roll a natural 20. You just fell a kilometer. You're yeah, it, it failed to the sky. You just fell from outer space. I mean, you, it doesn't well, there's matter a roof, how you, which, you, you <laughs> break everything in your body. Yeah, he, there was a roof, so he was lucky. They were inside, but he still got hit with nail to the sky. You're, you're not recovering from that spell. That's like shrugging off a hell ball. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's some people who can do it, yes. But they're not going to be feeling good afterwards, and there's not going to be anything cool. So where I draw the line on rule of cool is where it is unrealistic. All right? I mean, like, I had a character one time. <coughs> okay, so I guess this is kind of a story. There was a invasion from the Shadow Realm. You, rem you remember Emerald Snow's uh, shadow plot? Yes, I do. I had, a, I had a big role in that, if I remember. Yeah, as did I. I was, which is why I was so fucking annoyed when I got leveled out of the final fucking part by like two hundred experience. But either way, uh, you know, there was this part where there were like shadow werewolves from the shadow realm coming in and invading this forest, and we're told like, yeah, this portal that's been opened, it's not closing unless you know you do some serious fucking hacking bullshit. Well, my character was kind of an arcane hacker. And so he, if anyone was going to figure out how to fuck that spell over, it was going to be like my character or Trilo's character. And so my character ended up finding out, okay, well, I can sever the astral lines that are holding this portal in place by using a black blade of disaster. 
And so he ended up, but you know, the, the play, uh, the DM was like, look, if you do this, that portal's going to explode. There's a high chance you're going to fucking die. And I'm like, okay, well that's the risk my character is going to have to take. I'm level like 23. If it kills me, whatever. If it, and <laughs> this was like a permadeath situation, this would have lost, you know, lost me my character. And, um, so I cut the ties I, after, you know, getting everybody the fuck out. And they did the typical, we're not going to leave you behind. And he's just like, I'm a douche. You don't like me anyway. Get the fuck out. <laughs> okay. Why the fuck are you, tr why the fuck are you caring? You people ran me yeah. out of town with, with pitchforks and torches two months ago. Get the fuck out. Okay. I am. I hate this guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so like, I end up cutting the ties on it. And this is interesting. There's another interesting part of this. We'll get to it afterwards. So I cut the fucking lines. The, the portal fucking explodes. I'm left with four HP at the end of it. I had something like 280 HP. I took like 296 damage. Oh. Okay. I was alive only by sheer fucking stupid luck and the fact that I had one very specific buff spell on that shaved like 30 damage off of the hit. All right. So yeah. my character, I'm like, okay, I have four HP and a bleed effect on me. I'm dead. <laughs> Unless somebody comes back in three seconds, I'm fucking dead. My character's going to be gone year and a half worth of playing this character down the drain. All right. So the, the DM is describing it. All right. And they're like, you've lost both your legs. You've lost half of your left arm. You are crispy from head to toe. Your organs are spilling the fuck out. If you don't get hit with a heal spell right now, you are fucking dead. Well, thankfully, along came the fucking druid who's like, I'm not going to leave you. And I'm like, bitch, you tried to run me out of town two months ago. And they came back and they hit me with a heal spell and brought me back up to full health and a greater restoration and a regeneration. And they poured like every possible healing spell they had on my character. Okay. Mm. Mm. Sorry. Cigarette. Mm. It fucking went out. And so they get my character back on their feet. But as soon as my character's conscious, they start bitching about, you You burned down half the forest. And I'm like, bitch, I saved the forest. I don't care if I burned half of it down. You still have half of it left. If there would have been no forest if I didn't do what I just did and almost fucking died doing it. So oh God, I shut know who your that fucking was. mouth. Yeah, you know exactly who the fuck that was. And... um. But the, like the, the thing is, is my character had this habit of never taking their helmet off because, you know, it was just kind of cool. And afterwards, it's like he's never taking his helmet off because like a year later, he's still recovering from that blast. He he looks like fucking Darth Sion in KOTOR 2. He's like crispy still. He's kind of got he's kind of crunchy in some parts. Like his jaw is partially like nailed on to his fucking skull. So his jaw will actually not fall the fuck out of place. Like he was an ugly motherfucker. And so he had to use transmutation magic and illusions to not scare children. If his helmet accidentally fell off. Hmm. <sighs> <laughs> Fun times. Fun times. So, you know, those are instances where, again, you have to think outside the rules. Think outside the box. And uh, that was an instance where, you know, rule of cool kind of applied because technically my character should have been an armless legless fuck for their entire life. Oh, I but... can actually think of a recent example of uh, thinking outside the box. Can you think of it? Good. I uh, was on a plot recently, and to sum up a long thing, we had to destroy a target. But the people who were protecting the target had summoned a planner portal right in front of it. And, the, and that was the only way that we could access it. So if you tried to fire a spell at the target, it would go through the portal. If you tried to launch an attack at it, you'd go through the portal. So the only way to access this thing was through the portal, so we couldn't destroy it easily. Well, at that point, I had to page the DM and say, do I have line of sight past the portal? And DM thought about it for a minute and said, yeah, you have line of sight behind the portal. And so what I did was I summoned something behind it. I summoned a Black Blade of Disaster behind the portal and ordered the Black Blade of Disaster to attack the now completely vulnerable thing. And the DM had to decide, okay, how is this going to work? How is this going to interact with the portal? 
And am I going to allow this to happen? Because he just nullified the entire defense with no effort. There you go. Should me and my and, friends use D and D to write fantasy novels, not set in the D and D world? You mean like role playing yeah. out a D and D game? Hang on a second. You mean like role playing out a D and D game and then novelizing it? I know people who have done that. Yes. Yeah, so go right ahead. You were saying, Mari? Um. Uh, personally, what do you think is better for? <sighs> No, just in general, like 3.5 or the one that you were talking about, 3.5 or just 5e? I would say inner bias engaged. 3.5 is the superior without system. Without inner bias. 3.5 is the superior system. But even without my bias, uh, I believe it is, in fact, the superior system. It's a lot more open. It's a lot more... Uh, it's a lot easier to go very free form with it. There's a lot more content. Holy shit. Is there more content? Uh, you know, there, you have, I don't even know how many official books, but then you have the decades worth of homebrew content. Uh, the stories were better. Uh, the system was very easy to, streamline and create your own rules for it was the system that if you wanted to redesign it uh that's the one to go with and just just the number of prestige classes alone i say is uh definitely better three uh, out of 3.5 versus fifth well two, um, thing, two things i can add on to that well, one thing to add on in a question. Uh, Pathfinder is actually very heavily based off D&D 3.5, so it seems that Paizo definitely agreed with you on that. Well, Paizo did that because 4th edition flopped, and they're like, people just want an upgraded 3.5, let's make an upgraded 3.5. And there was, a lot more, there was a lot of other reasons behind it, but that was the main selling point. Uh, I mean, even their tagline was 3.5 survives. Um, so they just basically just made the fucking thing because people wanted more 3.5. And the question that I have is what about for pe players who are completely new, which system do you think is easier to learn 3.5 or 5.0? 5.0. Easily hands down. No contest. 5.0 is the easier system to learn. So for someone who's completely new, would you recommend having them learn 5.0 and then move up to 3.5? Yeah, you know, uh, it's actually like if you had to, if you wanted to progress someone along to even second edition, you go fifth because then that gets them thinking in the D and D mindset, okay, and then you can move them to three point five, and then you can move them to second edition, because I know a lot of people had you know thought that second edition was too complex, second edition was too hard to understand, uh, and because a lot of the times there was no clear mechanical method uh, you know method between one mechanic to another it was all just kind of yeah this is cool yeah that's cool let's do this mechanic let's do that mechanic and there wasn't really a strong relation uh between every mechanic whereas in 3.5 they kind of all rhymed if you get what i'm getting at whereas in you know you'd have to constantly be looking at every, you know the the source book in 2.0 for some people to um you know, to understand how to do something, especially with how stats progress for like strength was, you know, had four different types of 18 uh, and, you know, but everything else progressed differently. And <clears throat> you had a different, you had a single, simple strength, the singles that you had a single strength modifier in 3.5 and fourth and fifth. But in the second, it was like, well, if you're doing this, your strength modifier is calculated differently. If you're doing that, you know, you know, if you're lifting, it's different. If you're pulling, it's different. If you're trying to break, it's different. Blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm getting at? Uh, you know, and that was just strength. God knows what the fuck the rest of the, you know, if you want to go into break down everything else. But uh, yeah, fifth is a lot easier to fucking remember. Mm. Somebody is sending me fucked up shit on Discord again. Oh boy, the these people who think they are animals are way too fucking cringy. Mm. 
some guy went to his father's funeral in his um I don't even know what it is. I don't I just Oh, these fucking idiots. Anyway, fucking weirdo fucking other kins aside, I mean so my, my first recommendation to you, uh, Mari, is you've got to get your group down to four people. I'll do that. I the will second, never do that. The other thing is, like, you're using Discord. Are you typing all this, or are you doing it by a voice call? We're, we're typing. It's just generally easier. Mm. It's easier to keep track of. So I, personally found it's, for time. I personally found it's more enjoyable to do it over voice because then, you know, people could get into character better. They can, oh, no, you know, no, fucking no, do their definitely. weird voices and all that. that and... It most likely is. I've never actually done that before, but... we would probably try that next session, but uh, we definitely would... W I mean, honestly, just, um, I think it would probably be... In the event that we did something like that, it would be a good idea to maybe assign someone the role of just, like, taking notes on everything or something like uh, what the hell's happening in the campaign session, whatever, as it's going on. That's your Codium shop. Where's your Codium? Uh, yeah. Did you not have a Codium? No, we do. He's, he's just, he's just freaking conked out right now. Okay. We could have uh, got him on if he wasn't asleep right now. Mm -hmm. I say you always should run with a Codium. Mm hmm uh, that's just the fucking given in my thing. It, you want somebody there taking notes for you so you can focus on the plot so you don't have to be worrying about making sure everything's... But it, it, also, as a DM, you know, if you're taking... If you're going scripted and everything, uh, this won't be hard for you to, you know, just refer back to your notes. It... it, it I mean, and you're also doing this adaptation attack on Titan thing, right? Correct. Uh, hang on. I have a question. Is it true that Renfamous is a furry who wrote erotic furry fit? Because I don't know. I just heard it from somewhere. Don't know. <laughs> don't care. Uh, I honestly can't care less about Renfamous. Rule 14. I, well, then you're the one who is constantly barking up that tree. I'm the one yelling that at you. Don't even dare. Do not dare preach Rule 14 here. <coughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. You don't want to know. Mm. No, I don't. So I'm going to fucking spare you. All right? I'm just here to talk about <laughs> games. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Jesus. Ah, oh, motherfuckers. No, don't ask what... No, nobody answered Jonah Arts. Nobody answered Jonah Arts. I got like nine people fucking hitting me up all the same goddamn time. Jesus Christ. Ooh. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry, just gotta clear something up here. Mm. Okay, that's out of the way. So let me see what else here. You said you were doing music with um your game as well. Yeah, it's just from like the original soundtrack and stuff. But people can make suggestions if they want to. Um, I typically al always say um go with things that aren't vocal is the best thing, especially if you're having people write or, um, uh, you know, if you're, do especially if you're doing it by having them write, because then you could throw everybody off and you get Freudian slips in their writing. Um, I mean, the good thing about, uh, doing it all on a discord server is that you can make a room where only people who are assigned with the, uh, DM role can see that room. So mm. you never have to leave the server. You can put all your notes in there. Yeah. There's a few server related things that I need to do. Uh bug if you want to help me with that later. <laughs> uh yeah, sure. Okay, thank uh, you. Uh that's an old meme uh from Tim Cook, roll for anal circumference. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
It's an old D and D meme. Roll for anal circumference. I thought that was a fatal reference. Was it? I thought it was D and D because I remember seeing it in context D and D. No, I'm pretty sure that's a reference to Fatal, the worst RPG system ever made. You mean because you actually, from my understanding, you actually have to roll for that when you're creating a character in that system. Oh, fucking! Because uh, I remember it in reference to a joke about troll rape, like being raped by a troll. That's disturbing. Hmm. I mean, I, I mean, judging. I mean, I have to imagine that's the only thing you would legitimately <laughs> roll for in a steel for circumference. <laughs> uh, I think it was uh, also used in the story about like a halfling thief who was trying to uh, sneak shit into jail. Uh, that would also be a good I mean, fucking. God oh, damn it. Gaming and Panda is just posting the weirdest fucking. I got. I can't. I can't be looking at Twitter right now. People keep post <laughs> sending me Twitter shit, and uh, Panda keeps posting weird ass fucking shit again. But that's this that's is why I don't. Panda. That's Panda. So I don't, I don't that's fucking. Panda does. I don't fucking. I don't fuck around with that shit, man. Yeah. That's kind of Panda stick. Like either Panda's cool, but fucking. I can't. I can't, I can't have that in my feed at all fucking times. No, once he realizes that he annoys you, he keeps on hammering at that. Oh no, mm -hmm. it's 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 not like annoying. It's just like, dear sweet God, I don't need to see the bottom of the barrel of humanity every time yeah. I open Twitter. There are some guys doing Fortnite dances at a funeral, and I'm just like, no, 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 we're fucking done here. <laughs> we are fucking done here. Ah, this Fortnite shit. I'm so tired of fucking Fortnite. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yo! Dan, Dan Crenshaw. Dan Crenshaw. Just, no, help me. Dan, ah. what the fuck did you do? What happened this time? Ah! Uh, I laughed too hard, and one of my ribs compressed. How oh, yeah. do you do that? She's she's like she's she's having digestive issues lately, and she's been getting really sick because of it. So she's got like so she's she um she's got to have like, every time yeah every time she freaking laughs too hard it it's like uh like okay have you, have you ever been like punched really hard in the chest before? It's like in the fucking solar plexus. Did you say? I said, have you ever been like punched just yeah, really Tuesday. hard before? In the okay, oh, Tuesday. Uh, I thought you said, "What did you say?" Um, but yeah, let's just 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 think of that, the, like the aftermath of that, where you're just breathing, and then uh, it's like my every week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Dan Crenshaw was making a big deal about him getting a new eye patch uh, for the State of the Union, and he just debuted it. And I want you to see. This beautiful fucking thing. Look at that. Big Boss is fucking rocking those eye patches. Oh, man. That's beautiful. It's one classy motherfucker. Thank you, Big Boss. Damn. Mm. Kind of makes me think about stabbing out an eye. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first no, time. Spaghetti, just take a fork to your right eye or something. I don't know. I'm saying that's our next president, man. That's our next president. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I'd vote the fuck. Uh, I'd vote the fuck out of that man. Ten mm. out of ten would vote for. Um. So anyway, uh, back to D and D. Are you gonna go ahead and give uh, finally give us a scene, Mari, to critique? Hold on, one second. I need to open that. Don't open anything. This is on the fly. This is improv. You, sorry, I thought you were referring to the actual scenes. No, no, no. Set a scene for us. Improv. Let's go. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Come on. You you said this, this was easy shit. I guess this is what I off Camille for so long. Just, just... Get, somebody get a timer. Somebody get a timer. Where's my phone? 
you have set a scene. I'm gonna thirty seconds. That's all you got to do. Thirty seconds. So okay. put up a counter for how many times she stutters before she actually gets something uh, intelligible out. Okay. Are you ready, Mari? Um. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. So we're we're going ahead. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give you a topic. All right. Um. And again, you don't have to be flowery about it. Basic is best. Just be sure and concise. Yeah, just be straight to the point, okay? Go ahead and describe uh, a city slum to us. Can you do that? Or do you want a different topic? Uh, no, Patrick Work. I should be able to do that, I hope. Okay, a city slum. Go ahead in five, four, three, two, one. DM, go. Oh, no. Come on. I'm I can't not, do it verbally. That's I'm, not the start, thing. I'm not starting a timer until you start talking. I can't do it verbally. That's the thing. Do it. Go. You're supposed to be able to do this. Go. Come on. You can do this. <sighs> I'll get you started with three words, okay? Three words that will evoke the feeling of a city slum for you. Welcome to Detroit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Broken glass. Broken windows? <laughs> was that a question? That was a question. Come on, come on, you do this. When I think of Detroit, I think of broken windows. When I think of Detroit, I think of anal rape, but... <laughs> okay, come on, come on, you can do this. Come on, go. <laughs> You've got like three seconds already, come on. She's gonna have a fucking conniption. Yeah, I thought you said this would be easy. I know. The party leaves their run-down tenement through the rickety door and steps out onto the dusty street. A newspaper tumbles past as they, as they look among the rusted cars and the broken windows of the old vacant shops across the street. As they search for the search for the street signs that will lead them to their next destination. They have to walk up to the street sign, though, as some car, as a car has knocked it over and nobody has come to fix it. Carefully stepping over the cracks in the sidewalk and the potholes in the street, they approach the, the they approach the bent pole to see the sign that reads Sixth Avenue. <laughs> All right, cut, cut. You, that's thirty seconds. Okay, see, see that that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not even a DM, by the way. No, they're not even a fucking DM. Can, so can you do that for us? Or do you want another example? Um, the thing is, I think I'm better at typing it than I am doing it orally. I'm never... Okay, that sounded rude. You're, you're not... Okay, trust, trust me. It's fine. Oops. <laughs> okay. okay. You're never going to get better without practice. So yeah. just, just try, go, go ahead. Don't think about how bad, like how it will sound if it goes bad. Just try doing it. Just describe anything. Set the stage for us. <laughs> Christ risen says, "Quote: I suck at oral." End quote. <laughs> I swear to God. Do you want another? Do you want another one? Do you want another one? Don't take that quote out of context, please. Everyone has already taken that quote out of context. <laughs> Christ risen again says, practice your oral. <laughs> okay, okay. You want another one? You want another example? Would that help? Sure. Okay. Serp, do you want another one up or do you want me to go? Uh, go ahead. Okay, I did one earlier, so let me think. Will be a good thing. Mm. Oh, I know, I know. Okay, we'll do this one. We'll do this one. I'm gonna describe. This is gonna be easy as shit, but no, no. I th I think I know how I can make this a uh, little trickier. Uh, right, I'm right. gonna describe a, a place and figure out what I'm describing. Okay. How's that sound? Should I just chime in whenever? It's uh, no. Wait till I'm done. We're gonna do thirty seconds on the clock, uh, just like with you. 
Hang on, I got something in my fucking throat. I'm still fucking. Uh, I'm still a little fucking sick. Okay. Uh, Thirty seconds on the clock. I'm gonna describe a location, and I'm pretty fucking sure Serp is gonna get it, but everyone else probably won't. You never know. I could have a stupid moment. I have a lot of those. Uh, yeah, about every forty-five seconds, actually. Mm. Um, yeah, more. Okay, so Mari, are you with us still? Yeah, I'm with you guys. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, where is my stopwatch again? I just closed the fucking thing out. Um, well, no. See, because I wanted to do sigil. But I'm like, how do I describe Sigil without it not being automatically aware that I'm describing Sigil? That and the fact that Sigil is easily one of the most varied places in the entire setting. Yeah, but it's got those iconic things. Like, you can't describe Sigil without describing the fact that you see the city coming up and the bladed architecture and the yellow smog and the variety of species that are walking around and the people carting the corpses. Bring out your dad. Bring out your dad. Uh, you know, the clockwork modrons ticking down the street, the odd portal opening here and there. I mean, it's pretty fucking obvious you're talking about Sigil. I wouldn't have known that if you hadn't said anything. Well, you wouldn't, but you know, I can think of at least ten people in the chat. It occurs probably, to me that so far we've we've all been talking about the importance of giving descriptions and good narrations, and I'm the only person that's actually succeeded at doing that. Okay, okay, okay. Starting the clock, and don't even worry about trying to guess it because that, that was just a way for me to try and slip in sigil shit. And <laughs> five, four. Three, two, one. As you enter into the city, the guards give you an annoyed stare. They see your rusted equipment, the dust and bl blood caked on your armor, and know that immediately you are someone who is going to bring trouble. As you move deeper into the city, pushing your way through the crowd, you see the festival in front of you that you've been hearing so much about. You see the bards and the trombadors standing atop their stages, the, uh, the townspeople cheering and clapping. The, row, uh, the, uh, the sides of the streets are lined with vendors and booths from every con uh, corner of the world, different merchants from different parts of the world all peddling their wares. You see a man selling salted fishes. Another has silks of every color that you can imagine. In the, uh, off in the distance, you see a fat nobleman making his way through the crowd. He's got guards flanking on either side, making sure that the rabble, the riffraff, are parted so that their lord may make his way through unhindered by the unwashed peasantry. Okay? I set the scene. I set the stage. Describe them. Describe the motel room my brother lost his virginity in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so come on. Can you do that? And I'm rusty. I haven't DM'd in like fucking two years. I've never done it, period. The room was dimly lit. I'm just trying to the mattress covered in bare sheets with questionable stains. The light <laughs> flickered overhead as if uncertain whether it wanted to bear witness to the act about to take place. Giggity. Giggity. <laughs> Look, uh, Trilo, I don't you? need you. Oh my I fucking don't need, god! You I don't need it. you describing your Saturdays. <laughs> no, hey, that guy said he wanted he wanted to describe the motel room where his brother lost his virginity. I was trying to do that. Yeah, and I'm describing your Saturday because you were the one they lost their virginity to. Hey, now, come on! Ah, what the fuck you was that? Where I was on Saturday. God, don't hurt yourself. The lighter. No, I just, that's what you get. That's called instant karma. I think I just found a staple or a nail or something in my carpet, and now I can't find it. I stepped on it, and now it's gone. God damn it! 
It's probably embedded itself in your foot. If it was embedded in my foot, I'd fucking know. It'd be pretty hard not to. Okay, so can you can you do it now? Oh right. no, I've stepped With on a nail before and I didn't notice until my foot started bleeding. Withheld says the huge iron doors open slowly but surely with rust and dust falling upon the marble floor. The tr three travelers, dirty and wounded, enter Gizarak's palace. Come on, everybody's doing it now. Everybody's doing it now. You can do it. I can't do it orally. Let me do it in the chat. Hold on. Come on, you can do it. Here, let, let me give you the easiest possible scenario. This will be really easy for you to do. Describe the room that you are currently in. No, uh, what? Well, Jarth. If you can see, I know you're fucking there. Um, where the fuck are you? There you are. Jarth, check your fucking Discord. I'm going to bring in a rando here. Mm. Check your Discord. I sent you a link to the chat. Get in here. And do it. It's goddamn right, peer pressure. Gotta, God gotta show her. <laughs> Come on, you can do this. What if you would you if you write it down first and then you recite it? Would that be better? Mari. Mari. No, oh, she's in the she's in Better. the chat. Thank you. Yeah, she's like fully in the chat. Mm. Apparently. No, I'm right here. Uh... Okay, well I sent Jarth the link. I don't know if they see or not. You have to open it in Google Hangouts. Uh, sorry, not Google Hangouts. Um, uh, Google Chrome. It won't work on Firefox unless you have like three different fucking plugins, and it's an absolute pain in the ass. Because Google only designs their stuff to work with their stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's annoying as shit. Okay, Om Lo says, The barn reeked of musty old hay, its animals and vermin scrambling about as your candle shines a dim light inside, disturbing the residents. The taste of filth hangs on your tongue as you open your mmm. <laughs> you open your mmm. Oh yeah, Sword Wills comes, uh, brings up a good point. Um, Mari, describe your favorite mech. Those things, I, dude, fucking nobody can do that. Nobody those, can do those, that. Those, sure? those things, those things are fucking out there. Oh, Tim, <laughs> I only now saw your suggestion. I mean, Tim. it's pretty easy to describe one of those things if you know what <laughs> you're supposed to describe it as. I mean, I could, I could, I could easily just say, um, freaking cyborg kaiju, and that's that's basically it. But you uh, being descriptive about it is another deal entirely. Well, you don't want to be like super descriptive. Oh, okay? I mean, not like, even not even just super descriptive, just su descriptive in general. Let me find something. Where's my okay? Uh, flashlight. Apparently, let me add on to this visual description of your mm -hmm. favorite. Lori, I'm uh, Lori. <laughs> I've conceded that I am fucking terrible at describing things. Like, period. Okay, let me see here. Let me... Apparently my fucking overhead light doesn't want to turn on, so I gotta do this by fucking flashlight. You don't even, you don't even have to describe a scene. Just, like, describe something. Anything. Don't talk in it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good. That is good advice, Don't Professor it. Pixel. Don't talk in it. Yeah. 
Yeah, Professor Pixel comes uh, comes with good, comes in here with good advice. Mm. It's like my brain just took a dump all over the floor. Mm. Mm. But then again, how is that much different from what I'm normally like? Oh, that is that is a poor choice of words. Okay, here we go. No, no, that's not good. I'm trying to find a good example here. Nope, 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 nope. Um, let's try. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> okay, I found something that might help you. There's a stink bug in my room. Congratulations. Describe the stink bug then. Six-legged fucking abomination. Of <laughs> <laughs> I like Benjamin's uh, comment. I entered a YouTube live stream. The avatars promised gossip of comic books and fantasy, even weeb shit. I was eager to be surprised. What I found was three men bullying a poor NPC woman into dungeon mastering. <laughs> Congratulations, you devoted to NPC. Oh, uh, come on, Mari, do something. Do it, do it, do it. Do it. I mean, she did uh, technically describe the stink bug, so. Being bullied live by 900 different people. So, do we have yeah, any so you describe the stink bug off? further. Describe the musty stink bug further. And the musty fucking stink bug. It smells Is it like brown. Is it green? Inquiring minds must know. No, it's black, apparently. Hmm. How the fuck it even got in here is beyond me. Living beneath the floorboards, apparently. Or just came in through a window. That reminds me of when I had a stink bug drop down on me from the ceiling because it came out of the air conditioning duct. Hmm. Uh, oh no, it's on the ceiling right now. I'm okay, I think I finally found it. Inevitably. And then I'll spray it with salt, or not salt water, uh, soapy water, and then it'll die. And meanwhile, we're still sitting here talking about stink bugs and trying to get poor Mari to describe something. Eventually, I promise, we will get back to talking about D&D. I mean, this is kind of talking about D&D. We're just waiting for her to be cooperative. Come on. <laughs> I don't know, man. Are we talking about D&D or trying to stage an intervention? <laughs> I think this is a little bit <laughs> above. Both. Jinx. Uh, okay, well, I guess she's 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 gonna she's gonna blue ball all of us. Mm. Okay. Oh, no, you're making me feel bad. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, blue ball on all of us. It's like the Cold War. Blue balled for thirty years. <laughs> That's how long this will take? Oh god, I'm not the only one now. Oh my god, I'm not alone. Um... That was a TMI joke, Bug. What are you doing? <laughs> Come on. That was a joke at my expense. That was a joke at your expense. You've got to have something here. Come on. Come on. Okay, if you would shush for a fucking second. Okay, let's give her 30 seconds of silence.
I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, an, it's an abyss up there. It's an abyss of nothingness. I scream to the abyss, and the abyss screams back. What the fuck even is this? Okay, look. I'm, I found a decent excerpt from a book. Okay? Probably one of the best written D&D books. Would that help? Would that sure. help you? Okay. The Flying Citadel was a masterpiece of evil sorcery. A dark stone castle rested on a, mono, a mammoth rock, which was itself surrounded by boiling magical clouds. The shock of being wrenched from the earth had toppled a few of the keep's walls, but the citadel remained intact enough to house an army of foul creatures. And as the citadel came close to the walls protecting Palanthas' old city, evil dragons dropped from the clouds. They flew in looping, chaotic patterns across, around the fortress as they awaited the order to attack. Even now, evil creatures lined the edge of the rock, waiting to drop into battle. Formations of good bronze dragons swept into the air and clashed in defense of Palanthas with the blue and black swords. Warm. The great dragons dove through the sky at terrible speeds, their screeches resounding through the almost silent streets. That was that was fucking amazing, and I could actually see that in my head. Yeah, James Lau James Louder is a great author. James Louder is a great author. Okay, okay. We're not we're not getting anything here. We're not getting anything here. Worst trade deal ever. Oh, here's another good one. Maybe, young, maybe, oh. maybe in the history. <clears throat> here's another good one I just found on a random page. The young man's screams reverberated through the crumbling tower of Strahd's outpost on the outskirts of Barovia. The cries for pity became pleas for a quick death, growing more shrill with each passing moment. They filled the tower's chimneys like gusts of air and entered the midnight sky as little more than haunting moans. The few peasants who dwelt near the abandoned keep had heard far worse coming from the place, so they weren't unnerved. They were Barovians, after all, and such night terrors were part of their lot of life. Those who heard the screaming merely checked the braces on their shutters and tried their best to fall asleep, thanking the gods that it wasn't them in that tower. The unfortunate prisoner in the ruined keep prayed to his gods too, but they did not or could not grant him a quick death. It was understood throughout the land and perhaps even the heavens that Strahd von Zarovich seldom trafficked in merciful ends. That's like that's like the 11 out of 10. Okay? That's like <laughs> that's like the peak. Jarth, you're with us. Jarth? Hello? Jarth, we can hear, like, everything around you. Can you hear us? I can't hear him at all. I can hear, like, his television. Yeah, it's I can hear what sounds Is that a microwave? like sort of wood. Yeah. It's almost like a microwave being opened and closed. Or a door. Uh, that might be me fucking with my flashlight. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's been telling me to DM a fucking game. I think so. <clears throat> oh, now he speaks. Jarth, you with us, Ben? He's in the call. Oh, wow. That's loud. Mm -hmm. Jarth. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, you were good before. Are you standing near like something really loud? Ah. Uh, uh, oh shit. Yep. That's that was my that was a heater. Sorry. Yeah, that was a very loud beep. Okay, so you want to go yeah. ahead and give us one? All right. I'm gonna 
borrow kind of an idea that was uh, brought up before. <clears throat> Let's see what I can do. Use working magic. You walk into this hotel room. It's a, it's a dirty place, not very well kept. The sheets don't look like they've been washed in a few days. Half all crumbled up and only halfway on the bed. Bright red neon flashes rhythmically, threatening to cause the weakest of stomachs to be. Yeah, this is tougher than I thought. No, but none of that really. But none of that matters. The woman of your dreams is in your arms. You're both happy, and you're about to make this night the most memorable and magical of your lives. You just pray to God that your brother-in-law never finds out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. There you go. There you go. That was a good twist on the end there. Omega Zero says no, I, that they know their beeps, and that was a space heater. Uh, Dark Design... Dark Design says, if you do it, would be a good way to debut your game of Obsidian Dawn. Yeah, when, when the game is actually done, I intend to uh, DM a game on the channel, uh, which I guess I have a... I guess I can give a mechanics update. Where is it? Uh, I just had a new mechanic that I dropped. Um, this is one that's still kind of eh. Eh, not really all that big on it. Um, magical spells grow in power in relation to the caster's governing ability score. Low tier spells will use the ability score modifier. Mid tier spells will use full ability score. Uh, high tier spells will use full ability score plus 50 percent. Epic level spells will use f uh, twice ability score or higher. So your spells will always continually level up. Not just by you know dice size and things like that, but also by adding in uh, your intelligence or wisdom score or whatever fucking attribute you use for casting. Uh, in a similar way to how a fighter's uh, will you know weapon will have its strength bonus added to uh, the damage, because uh, I want magic to be punishing, but I want spells to be very infrequent in use. Uh, so I guess that's, uh, then we had, uh, oh, we figured, I figured out HP finally. So why don't you guys tell me what you think about this actually? Uh, once hit points have been depleted, characters are able to take damage equal to twice their endurance score. Every time a player takes damage after zero, <coughs> they are moved one step along a condition track. Every step along the condition track comes with a unique disability. The condition track is five stages long. Final position on condition track resu results in the character being rendered immobile and taking one damage per turn. At the... Uh, oh, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. That's something else. Uh, yeah, that's a different mechanic. Okay, yeah. So that's how HP works. Again, uh, once hit points have been depleted, you can take damage equal to twice your endurance score. Every time you take damage after zero, you move along the condition track, and like step one will be like, you take one less action per turn. Number two will be like, uh, you can only make one action per turn. Things like that. You know, you'll have a different um, again hindrance applied to every step. So, I like it. I think it needs a little refining, and definitely figure out that track. But I think it could definitely work out pretty well. I just started the game. Uh, Toxin says, yo, I just joined and was actually about to start my first ever game as the Dungeon Master in D&D 5th Edition. Is this 5th Edition that you were talking about? Uh, we were... Uh, no, that was my own game. We were talking about... Um, but we're talking about just D&D as a whole. So, uh, not really any particular system here. So, that's where the game is at now. I'm moving... I, I, I'm shifting back to mechanics. I'm trying to work on the system a little bit more now. Um, and then spend a little more time on the comic tomorrow and then, you know, focus back on the system as, 
as one idea ends up evolving, the other idea ends up evolving, and I kind of just got to keep bouncing back and forth between the two here. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Mm. Ah, son of a bitch. I just dropped a magazine on my foot. Ouch. And it was 45s, so mm. that was not... I guess it's better than dropping a 9 mil on there, because that would have been twice as many rounds. <sighs> but a lot heavier. Yeah, so... Do you think you can do one now, Mari? I was honest to God hoping that you had forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, we'll stop hounding her to do a description because it took like 20 minutes of hounding her to get anything out. Uh, well, how will spells do damage? Will it be dies or flat damage? Oh, I found the fucking the fucking nail. Okay, found the fucking nail. Um, be a combination of both. You'll look kind of like a weapon. You'll have you know your flat damage bonus from your attribute score. But you'll also, like, so say Fireball, for example. It's not going to be called Fireball, but it'll be like, you know, 4d6 damage or, you know, 1d6 per caster level plus, uh, you know, your ability score modifier, which is the ability score modifier is half of your ability score. So, for example, if you have 12 intelligence and you're casting a Fireball and you're fifth level, you'll be doing uh, 5d6 plus six for damage on a fireball. But while that sounds like a lot, you'll be every character has some form of magical damage reduction. So, you know, that fireball will, you know, be doing a chunk less. <clears throat> so either way, anybody else here while we wrap this up then uh, have any DM advice? Anything you want to add in, Trilo? I would say the most important thing as a DM is to know your players. Get to know what kind of things they like, what kind of things they expect. Every group of players is different, and all the advice in the world isn't going to do you any good if you're running a campaign for the wrong kind of players, or if you're... And you can get a long way without knowing a whole lot if you have players that are willing to put up with that kind of thing and get engaged with your story. So definitely take the time to know who your players are, what they expect, and what they enjoy. And I definitely get... know who to boot then, in that case. Yeah. Mm. I'm gonna need to confirm with Bug though, like when we're out of this call or whenever it's over or whatever. Yeah, well, we'll discuss that later. Don't worry. What about you, Jarth? Do you have any good DM advice? Uh, I'm really new to this, uh, so no real good advice here. Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, still kind of caught off guard here. <laughs> it's like, um, it's like. I don't know, the best way to kind of describe why, uh, like, yeah, um, <clears throat> why I was scrambling to get stuff all together and why it's like, uh, I'm being kind of unprofessional about this is like, um, so imagine you're, um, you're sitting at a Shakespeare play and you're like, gee, it would be cool if I someday got to uh, get on stage and recite Shakespeare. Then the uh, guy who's producing this uh, play is sitting right next to you. He's like, yeah, we're Go right on ahead. Go on up. It's your, it's your cue. And he pushes you on stage, and now there's all these people watching you. <laughs> now what do you do? The other thing is you also can't be nervous about DMing. Right. Because you're all, you're all getting there and playing a fucking game about make-believe and slaying dragons or giants or whatever the fuck. You're all being nerdy as shit. Right. Okay? It so, was uh, more, all that was more like in reference to the uh, comment I left. Like, I just kind of left that there, not really thinking anyone's going to take that seriously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <sighs> still, uh, glad I'm on. So anyway, um, anything else you guys want to add? Uh, Mari, Bug? Hmm. Um, 
I just wanted to thank you guys for all the advice, even though I kind of embarrassed myself. You're gonna you're gonna have to come to terms real quick with embarrassing yourself as a DM. Because mm -hmm. as a DM, you're always the person who's gonna make a fool of yourself uh, first, because you're gonna be the one talking first. Omega Zero says, as a DM, save, stay on the main story path, only do side quests as optional things uh, to get some form of reward worth doing it. Hmm. I've got a huge ass script to finish in that case. Fucking Christ. No, no, no. Okay, quest look, free, rather. Never do scripts. Never. Not a script. It's more of a quest free, honestly. Okay, yeah. Quest tree, fine, but even then, I say the least notes the possible. You just want to like this is your basic, you know, this is your key point, this is your next key point, and just organically let it flow from point to point. Okay. And at the end of the day, you need to understand you're the fucking DM. Okay. If you have like two paths and you're like this path, if the players go okay, think of it like this. If the players go left, you know, it's supposed to they think it'll lead to one thing. And they go right and it'll lead to something else and you want them to go right. Regardless of which way they go, whatever the hell is on the right path, you can have them find on the left path. Because the world bends to your whims and rules. Uh, Omlo says, as someone has to hold a potluck and or a host at their house. What? I think he's saying just bring food. This is a digital game, so it doesn't it doesn't food food and drink isn't factoring in. So there you go. That's some that's oh almost as further up. Number one, everyone must be able to have fun and not take the game too seriously. Everyone must have a matching opening time during their schedule. Everyone must be willing to compromise. Yeah. <clears throat> all things that are going to be needed. We're not talking about porn today, Fat Panther. Yet. <laughs> so, probably the last bit of advice that I can give as a DM is um, mm, you know what? This is the bit of advice that you never want the players to hear, but you can make the die rolls whatever the fuck you want them to be. Mm. If you want the villain to hit a nat 20, that villain hits that nat 20. If you want the villain to hit a natural one, the villain hits a natural one. Remember, everything about the game is in your fucking hands. But make sure you always do it on the side of people having more fun. Yeah, otherwise, people start Hendersoning, and that shit's annoying as hell. Yeah. There was an argument between full Hendersoning if I can English for two seconds here, full Hendersoning and half Hendersoning. Okay, half Hendersoning is is not as annoying as like a full Henderson because that like with a full Henderson that's just full on fucking plot derailment, and you're gonna have to have it's gonna be a bitch and a half to get the plot back on track at that point. But with half Henderson, it's more just like they're gonna they're gonna fuck up the immediate thing that's going on at that moment if you don't hard counter that shit. But it won't usually end up having a huge effect on the overall plot. A lot of the time, it's just really annoying when people pull full Hendersons because then you have to rewrite the entire fucking thing around it. It's, it's that that's kind of why it's better to not go with scripts too, because then you don't have to worry about just completely fucking going back and like, oh shit, well I gotta rewrite this now. I gotta rewrite all this other crap. You know, it's just yeah. it's it's a pain in the ass. That's why I'd say the best thing the DM can do is focusing on their improv skills and having no outline whatsoever. Like when I'm coming up with a game, I basically like, these are the monsters I want. And this is what the boss villain is. And I want him to go to a dungeon and the rest is just improv. Okay. A hundred percent improv because I know my players aren't going to let me do what I planned in the first place. Mm -hmm. So fuck it. Why am I going to fucking get attached to a plan if my players are just going to fuck everything up anyway, 
I mean, I could plan out an entire fuck dungeon, okay? And I have had players straight up never enter the dungeon, and I'm just like, I worked on that dungeon for a week and a half, <laughs> and they didn't even fucking set foot in it. What the fuck? The flip side of that, and the importance of knowing your players, as I was saying earlier, is you'll also get occasionally get a group that when you don't have a plan, they will simply just mill around with a bunch of lost kittens and not know what to do until you tell them essentially, go this way. Yep. Yep. They will fucking do that too. Or you'll end up having that one fucking player who's just so much of a D-bag that they derail everything and then everybody just doesn't fucking care. Like every time Bass or Voss joined a fucking game. How many campaigns did those motherfuckers derail, Trilo? At least five. Ooh, fucking douchebags, man. Uh, Bug, do you want to talk about or I don't know if uh, no, I don't think he's gonna wind up ever finding the video. I don't think it matters if we talk about it. What? What? Uh, can we talk about the Aaron story, Bug? Oh, that. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna fucking this. This was something that was long resolved, like a long ass time ago. There's no bad blood regarding this person now, but um, a while back. Uh, one of our friends, he was having, like, some sort of fucking family crisis or whatever at the time, and he was DMing a, uh, a fucking server we were doing. It was for a, uh, it was for a Gundam homebrew D&D, which I think I mentioned that to you before at least once. I might have mentioned that. Maybe that was, maybe that was Fallen Angel that I was talking to you about. I'm, I'm sure he'll know what the hell I'm talking about. Anyway, um, so, when we were doing that campaign... Fucking, I don't remember what exactly set it off. Uh, Mari, do you, do you remember? Do you remember what the the cause of everything that happened was? Like specifically, what was like the last straw with the shit? Uh, the last straw was I don't know. I think you might have called him a fucking retard or something. No, 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 that wasn't it. Everyone fucking calls each other that though in in the group though, so it doesn't. Well, I don't either that, that or you called him a spaz or something. You might have insulted him. I, no, I don't think that that was the reason why. I think it was because that it was something regarding. Um, it had. I remember the reason why it happened was because he had something to do with like, oh, uh, he didn't want to freaking keep playing or whatever or something. Uh, I don't exactly remember what the hell the thing was. I think it was just that we quit for that night because that nobody was on. And um, so like we we have we have different servers for our D and D campaigns and shit, right? Mm -hmm. So um. What happened was, is th thankfully, uh, I had a fucking backup server made myself before this, but he fucking deleted the entire server on a whim because he fucking was like, oh, well, I'm just gonna, I, I don't, I don't want to play this anymore, so everyone else can go fuck themselves, and he fucking deleted everything. It was like a full-on, this campaign took, I think, how many months was it? It was like six months in? Six months of 2017. Yeah, and, and that was like playing every single fucking night. Which was horrible, and we had a. That was a horrible idea to do that. Honestly, I don't know why we decided to freaking play every night. That was that was the worst fucking decision we could that have made. That wasn't my could idea. Some sort of the idea was that. Could have had because it was such a fucking nightmare to organize. Not everyone could fucking be on. It was just it was it was it was annoying as hell. But long story short, he fucking deleted the server. Just just over something really fucking stupid. Why are we bringing this up right now, actually? Because I don't she know server stories. Because she loves deviating. Yeah, that's 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 a good. That is that is that's not incorrect. Yeah, but anyway, we've been going on for about two hours and probably over two hours, so mm. we're gonna go ahead and yeah, two hours on the dot almost. And so we're gonna go up. ahead. Yeah. So, thanks for coming around, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for joining Trilo. It's been. It was fun. It's been like it's a seven. year since you had you on the fucking channel. Um, Actually, I don't think I've ever been on this channel before. Yeah, you did way back in the day. I'm pretty sure I had you on way oh, back in the day. Yeah, it's been a uh, long time then. Back when I was under 100 subscribers. And now I'm at 33,000. 33, what is it now? Coming up in the world, are you? Uh, 32,763. 
So anyway, thanks for coming around, everyone. Thanks for fucking watching and hanging out with us. Uh, I'll, I'll try to be better about announcing this shit, and maybe, maybe we'll do like a fucking one-off D&D game on the channel. Oh, that days. would be fun. That would be interesting. So, until next time, everyone, take it easy. Until next have time. Have fun. And please, for the love of fucking God, let's make entertainment great again.